If you are looking for budget-friendly gear to level up your video creations, in today's video I'm actually going to talk to you about the things that I use to shoot videos for YouTube. I will unveil the Wizard of Oz curtain and show you just kind of how much of a hack I am in addition to everything that I use for editing and recording, things that I like and frequently use to make my videos. I'm also going to share one of these things that is $40 that I think makes the biggest impact on my videos. One thing I don't use that often and I don't think you should purchase unless you have a specific need. And two things that I would upgrade if I had the money. Anyone can do what I do. If you went to school for videography and studied it, you would probably place my knowledge level as an advanced beginner or intermediate. Not for lack of trying, but it is due to a lack of funds and honestly, lack of time to learn more. So if a professional is telling you to do something different, listen to them. Again, I have no technical training. Everything I know about everything in my professional world is not information I learned in school. It was what I learned from watching others, trying things, failing, and then basically searching on Google. So if you are someone who found this video after looking for affordable, budget-friendly YouTube gear for starting a channel, I hope this is helpful. Let's start at the beginning. Two years ago, I started making little YouTube videos for work using my iPhone SE and iMovie on my piece of crap MacBook Air. My boss wouldn't buy a camera, tripod and microphone, so I did. And in August of 2022, I started my budgeting journey and I tried to make videos using my camera because this was easier, but I ended up defaulting to using this camera, even though it's definitely more time intensive for setting up, transferring the files and editing. So this, let's talk about this camera and what I use to record. I use a Sony ZV-1. Original purchase price was $487 because I purchased it used and I had a $60 gift card. This is a great camera for point and shoot. Out of camera audio isn't too bad when I'm here in my kitchen, but I do notice that in some places in my home there is a weird echoey sound. The other thing is I don't like holding it and I can't get smooth shots. I don't have a gimbal for smooth movement. That would be an upgrade that I just don't have the money for. The other issue is that transferring the files from this can take some time. The battery lasts about 50 minutes for me and sometimes the camera does overheat. So I couldn't batch record three videos in a row. I could probably hit two. I use a SanDisk 64 gigabyte card, purchased it on Amazon for $17.49. Even then, my first few videos on this channel were made using iMovie and this phone, but 95% of the footage that I use for my videos is from this camera. I, Honestly, I have no desire or need or want to upgrade it. And if this broke today, I would replace it with the exact same camera. It suits my needs for what I use for making videos today. I did a cash stuffing a few weeks ago with my new work phone and I actually hated it. <laughs> I hated the white balance on it. It kept going in and out. And if you're picky enough, you would have noticed it in the playback. So the next question that I was asked is, how do I get overhead shots? And guess what? It's not with a tripod, but while this tripod is here, let's talk about this. This is an Amazon Basics tripod and it extends to about 50 inches. And this is it. I don't love it. I don't hate it, but it was the cheapest one that I could buy since I was purchasing it for work. The legs extend and it feels sturdy when I'm carrying it together. I don't like holding the camera and walking around with it in my hand. That feels like it could slip, but I do love it when it's connected this and it feels like there's better grip in my hands. The issue I have is when I start and stop my camera, this wobbles a little bit and I notice all the wobbles. I have to edit out the wobbles and sometimes those wobbles actually make it into the videos. So that is, the annoying thing for me. But this is the first piece of gear that I have that I would replace and upgrade, but it meets my needs for right now. The tripod that I do want is $115 on Amazon, so I am realistic. $100 extra to potentially not edit out wobbles is not worth it to me, so I am sticking with this. And some other things that I use to shoot, don't laugh at me, but I actually use an iPad stand 
and I use my iPhone stand. So sometimes this helps me just get some lower level footage and I'll insert some clips of this. But I can be creative, I can use a bottle of water, prop a phone up, and I still get a, I still get a decent shot. So this is actually something that I used for work and I still do use for work, but it is something for budgeting videos that you don't need. It's a great tool, but I don't use it all the time because it creates more work. This is the Rode Wireless Single Channel Microphone System. It is my preferred audio for indoor work videos. And I basically actually try to avoid shooting with these outside when they're windy, but it's great for inside. This, these are great when I need to pick up the audio from a presenter and my camera is on the other side of the room. For cash stuffing, not necessary. When I edit the videos and I use a mic like this, I do need to edit two separate files and keeping the audio and the visual together is an editing nightmare. There is a learning curve with these and when you mess with the settings and then watch back and you find out that you have a hot video with a lot of peaking sounds because you didn't set this up right, it's just, it's just draining. In a dream world, I would have a better audio setup, but using the out of camera audio from this camera, it works fine. What else do I use to record audio? Well, this is $10 of money that I, I just literally pulled this out of the bin because I already threw it away. But this is a lavalier mic, awful, horrible audio, doesn't even actually work, but I didn't realize this until I plugged and played. The other issue with a lavalier mic like this is when you look down in a cash stuffing versus a head. So if I look in your head or looking down, the audio will pick up and there will be a difference. This is me getting progressively messier. So here is my piece of crap, $10 lavalier that, and I just double checked this, still doesn't work. So it's getting thrown in the bin. And here is just a regular straight out of the camera audio check. So the next question is, how do I record voiceover? And this is probably the best thing that I have purchased. And this is the one thing that I would recommend if you wanted to level up your YouTube game. I love a video with a really good audio. And I feel like for the price, this was $40.87 when I purchased it. This is an excellent microphone. It's a plug and play. And then other than me just not speaking loud enough, it is truly perfect and i'm sure audio nerds would geek out over something more expensive but this is it for me I sit i prop it up usually on a jar of protein powder so that i can speak directly into it and that's it i use this for work webinars and online classes and it is amazing just because i can tell the volume quality from when before when i just used to use my airpods to using this now for work and I know that there's people out there who use a gaming headset. There is a distinct audio sound when someone records through a gaming headset versus through something like this. The next question is, how do I shoot overhead like this? And there's two options. The first option is something like this. This still has the phone connector, but this was $20. $2.68. This is a clamp. This is an overhood mount. And I will have the links for everything in the description box below. This is cheap. This is crappy, but it is usable and it is functional. If you want to do this on a budget and get overhead shots, buy this one. There is a twang in some of my videos when I accidentally bump this. The way that you would get around this is by mounting this on a desk far away from you. But due to space in my office, I had to set it up close to me and then I would have to cash stuff on either side and often hit this. The other issue that I have, it might not be such a difficult thing with a camera phone, but with my actual camera, it's not that heavy, but sometimes I feel like I did have to tighten these connections a little bit too much. I was always concerned that I was going to mess up the threading inside this camera just by tightening so hard and, 
that was the only real concern about this for me. But this was how I used for the longest time to get an overhead shot. Let me talk to you about what I'm using now to get this overhead shot. So that was $22.66. This is $79.22. It takes minutes to set this up. It is sturdy. And this was a gift from someone on my channel who asked for a gear wish list. And this was one thing on it. Um, there is heft to this. It feels like my phone and my camera are secure when they're placed in it. And I have been using this since Christmas. And I just, I feel like this gives me a true overhead shot. The other question I was asked is, how do I get the different camera angles? I use a kitchen stool. I use a little wheelie storage thing from Ikea. I move the camera around a lot of times. You can imagine what that's like making a food video. And I use my little phone props. I use the little things like this. My ring light was the gift from Alicia with hands and bands, and I will show this to you. I know that there are ways to attach your phone to this, but I would admit that I would be a little bit concerned putting a phone on this and having it overhead and having it tip over. But this is the lighting that I use for my food videos, cash stuffings and budgets. And I even turn this on when I'm not filming. I learned why I understand professional food creators have a studio kitchen with a house kitchen because one has fancy lights. So in a dream world, I would have two of these in my kitchen and I would have one in my office and then that way I wouldn't have to move it all around. I would be in heaven. This is what works for now and it's great. I just move it around if I need it. Sometimes it's next to the stove, sometimes it's on the island and sometimes when I need a shot next to the crock pot, I actually set this in my kitchen sink. Let me show you what I started with. You can laugh at me, but this is a wall mounted light from Ikea. I attached this to a basket with a chip clip and this was originally how I started shooting my videos with my little mood lighting that you guys laughed at me for. The ring light is an upgrade. Yes, I think that if you don't have one, it is something that I think you should get. From what I see on Amazon reviews, you can buy a decent ring light for 20 to $40. It just depends if the ring light can hold the weight of your camera or if you need an overhead mount like the one that I just showed you. And I would always defer to a mount stand and not risk my camera and my light tipping over. By the way, if any of the information that I've shared so far has been helpful, please like this video and maybe share it with a friend who may like it. And I will have all the information in the description box below. Yes, there are affiliate links. I get a tiny percentage at no cost to you, but if you choose to go through my link, I truly appreciate it. But you could also just search for these items by yourself. What do I use to edit my videos? I am not here to say what software people should use to edit videos. Use what works for you. I'm on Reddit and I know what professionals use. There was one weekend when I was testing out different software for work videos and I felt that there was just too much of a learning curve with some higher end products. If I had a week off work, I would sit down and try it again, maybe, maybe over spring break. But I use something called Movavi. And after constant issues with the Adobe movie software we had through the work subscription, I just, I settled with Movavi. It is intuitive enough to do what I want, editing, voiceovers, captions, additional music. There are some features that truly annoy me. The subscription through work is about $100 every year. And there may come a point where I actually have to purchase my own license. Really, the thing with software is you just have to learn through trying. And I knew what I wanted from the end goal with my videos. I just didn't know how to get there. So there was a lot of Google searches of how do I do this in Movavi. Movavi does work great with long form videos where there are a few shots and limited transitions. But even with a brand new Mac computer, it does struggle with processing. With my 15-ish minute food videos, if you were chatting with me last week, you knew that it took about eight hours to export one video and then the software crashed and I reduced the file output from high to medium and then that took about four hours to export. That said, uh, my son has a computer which he built himself two years ago. It does have a great graphics card. He spent $600 building that computer and it does a great job exporting videos with the exception that because he's a teenager with 1700 games on his computer, there just wasn't memory, enough memory on it. And you all know how that ended. I lost footage, I cried a lot and I purchased Helga so I wouldn't have to feel like I was at the library on the internet with seven minutes before my time was up. 
when my son was coming home from school. Let's talk about music. This technically isn't gear, but I felt like it was something important to address. I pay $6.99 for a month monthly music subscription. I'll add an affiliate link in the notes below, but I'm gonna tell you the good and the bad. I love it. It works for me. Sometimes I just go through and I listen to music and you get 10 free uses per month. I like the software, so I ended up purchasing the monthly subscription. I usually select music that's calm and instrumental with no vocal effects. I don't want it to compete with what I'm trying to say. The other issue is that there could be a copyright claim if you're kind of a struggling YouTuber like me. Maybe if you stop paying for the subscription, then you're gonna have copyright strikes on those videos. What do I use to edit my thumbnails? I, I like editing vector images. I like manipulation. I like having control. I know a lot of you use Canva, but I use Adobe Illustrator, but I've also used Illustrator for work for 20 plus years. So there is minimal learning curve for me. Let's say you don't have one cent, but you want to improve your video game. Try and get some different B-roll shots. Even again, using something like this, using your camera phone and setting it up. Get some pretty shots of you with pens in a jar, your binders, a different camera angle of you writing down your budget and sweep over things. The other thing that I would suggest is always watching your videos back on your computer and phone before publishing them. I am partially deaf in my left ear, so I'm actually super conscious and self-conscious of how things sound. But you know how it is. If you're watching a playlist, you go from one video to the other and you might have to turn the volume up in one video and you might have to turn it down and somewhere in the middle is good. Sometimes that can be adjusted by doing different audio tests with your camera phone and just making them private videos. I hope this has been helpful. Chime in in the comment section below if you have any further questions and I'll see you in the next video.